In this lesson, we are going to discuss cDNA, or complementary DNA, and what you need to know about this topic for the MCAT. cDNA is generally used to get a cell to express a specific protein it wouldn't normally produce, or to increase the amount of a particular protein a cell produces by adding a chunk of cDNA that codes for the protein of interest to that cell. The MCAT doesn't expect you to know too much about this topic, so this video is going to be quite short. Specifically, they want you to know how cDNA is generated and how cDNA is different than regular chromosomal DNA. Unlike normal DNA, which is replicated from a template strand of DNA, cDNA uses an mRNA strand as its template, and the enzyme reverse transcriptase, which as its name suggests, runs transcription in reverse, converting RNA to DNA, instead of the other way around, as transcription normally would. This means that cDNA lacks introns and will only contain exons, unlike normal eukaryotic DNA sequences, which contain both. Since mRNA was used as a template, the introns have already been removed by post-transcriptional processing, so they can't be incorporated into the cDNA. After the initial cDNA is generated, DNA polymerase adds the complementary strand to form double-stranded DNA. From there, the cDNA is amplified using PCR, ensuring there will be enough around to use in gene manipulation studies. Finally, restriction enzymes are added to the cDNA to generate sticky ends, and the cDNA is then ligated into a vector, which can be added to a cell. Now that we understand what the AMC expects us to know about cDNA, let's look at a couple of questions on this topic. Here this question asks, the tumor suppressor gene P53 is a 25,759 base pair long gene that plays a crucial role in preventing cancer by binding to DNA and regulating gene expression. P53 CNA would be most likely to A. Contain more than 25,759 base pairs, B. Contain less than 25,759 base pairs, code for a shorter P53 protein, or D. Code for a longer P53 protein. To solve this problem, we need to recall what differentiates cDNA from regular genomic DNA, as well as what makes them the same. Genomic DNA and cDNA differ from one another in size. Because genomic DNA contains introns, it will be longer than cDNA, which lacks introns, because it was generated from an mRNA that already had those introns spliced out, meaning it would be shorter. In this case, this means the correct answer here must be B, since we would expect the cDNA to be smaller, i.e. it would contain less base pairs than the original due to its lack of introns, which is what B states. A is incorrect because it flips the size relationship between genomic DNA and cDNA, while answers C and D are both incorrect because genomic DNA and cDNA would express the same protein, and since those proteins are identical, they would have the same size. Now let's move on and look at another question. This one asks, which of the following enzymes is least likely to be used in the cloning of wild-type APOE cDNA? A. Restriction enzymes. B. Reverse transcriptase. C. RNA polymerase. Or D. DNA polymerase. Even though this question asks about wild-type APOE cDNA, we don't actually need to know anything about APOE. Since all cDNA is generated in the same way, this question is simply asking us about what enzymes are needed to generate cDNA in general, and which aren't. With that in mind, let's overview how cDNA is made. First, mRNA is isolated and converted into single-stranded DNA that is then converted to double-stranded DNA, which is cut then ligated into a plasmid. The mRNA to single-stranded DNA step uses reverse transcriptase since this process is the reverse of regular transcription, so we can eliminate answer B as it is used in cDNA creation. The single-stranded DNA to double-stranded DNA step uses DNA polymerase. Since the function of DNA polymerase is to create new strands of DNA, this makes sense. So we can also eliminate answer choice D since it is also used in cDNA creation. After the double-stranded DNA is generated, it is cut by restriction enzymes to create sticky ends and ligated into a plasmid. Ligation occurs through the action of DNA ligase. With this in mind, we can also eliminate answer choice A, since we needed restriction enzymes to generate the sticky ends in the first place. If DNA ligase had also been listed, we could have eliminated that answer as well, since that enzyme is used to join the CNA to the plasmid itself. Therefore, answer choice C, RNA polymerase, must be correct, since it isn't used in generating cDNA. This should make sense since RNA polymerase facilitates transcription, or the conversion of DNA to RNA. It wouldn't be included in the generation of cDNA since regular transcription never occurs, and instead we have reverse transcription, where we go from mRNA to DNA instead. In summary, we learned that cDNA is DNA that is generated from mRNA, so it can be cloned into organisms in order to study the role of certain genes. Since cDNA is copied from mRNA, it lacks introns and therefore will be smaller than the DNA that it corresponds to. The creation of cDNA throws normal centrodogma, dogma, specifically the process of transcription, wherein DNA is converted into RNA out the window. Instead, it uses a reverse transcriptase enzyme to reverse this process and generates a DNA molecule from RNA. At this point in time, the cDNA is single-stranded and is later converted into a double-stranded DNA molecule by DNA polymerase. Finally, the cDNA is ready to be inserted into a plasmid using restriction enzymes and DNA ligase, then transfected into the cell being studied. As always, if you like this video, make sure to like and subscribe for more helpful MCAT tips and share the video with anybody else who might be taking the test.